Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us to have another opportunity to, to serve you. Father God, forgive us of the sins we've done, knowing and unknowingly, Father God. Father God, we ask you to bless the ones that are hearing it and bless the ones that are reading it. Father God, we also ask that you help us to apply it to our life every day. Holy Spirit, we welcome you onto this podcast. We ask you to pour out your infinite wisdom onto us. Father God, we ask that you get the increase and I get the decrease and that i teach this lesson in the spirit and not in the flesh in jesus name amen so the key verse today is romans 10 and 11 as scripture says anyone who believes in him would never be put to shame romans 10 and 11 subject how to grow faith in god christian truth so i'm gonna say it and pause by each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like i'm growing in faith i am strong i am beautiful I'm not weary. All this week, we talked about faith and how we should have faith in God. And today, the Holy Spirit wants us to talk about how to build faith and increase our faith. There's so many ways to increase our faith, but we have to be ready to do this and ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Now, some people don't have this problem. Some people do. But for some of us that are struggling with this this problem, the first thing we must do is pray. Prayer will increase our belief. Prayer will help us always connect with God, and he will show us his will for our lives. A lot of us don't trust God because we feel we are kept in the dark. But God says this in John 15, 15, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have asked you friends for everything that I I call you friends for everything I have learned from my father. I have made it known to you. We're no longer servants, but we are his friends and he will tell us everything. So it may be known to us, but in order for him to do this, we must seek him through prayer. And that's how we connect with him. By doing this, we we have a conversation with him, not just asking and asking, but us expressing how we are feeling and waiting for his response. Psalms 27, 14, wait for the Lord and be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. This leads us to our other key, which is waiting. We have to wait on Jesus about everything. If we go out and do what we want, how do we expect to hear from Jesus? If we are doing what we want in our walk with Christ, we must wait for the shepherd to lead us. We are his sheep waiting for his guidance and waiting on his leadership. is the best way to do it. I have found it very hard to do, do my own thing, knowing fully well that I haven't asked Jesus what he wants me to do. Because while we wait, we are leaning on him. We are waiting on his response. This is this is this is helping us to stay focused on him and not our situation. The Bible tells us this, Psalms 102, 1 and 2, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night? Psalms 25 and 5. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. All day long I wait for you. This brings us to key number three, which is meditating. These verses will help us remember what we should be doing, which is meditating on the word of the Lord day and night. When we do this, the word has so much in it to build our faith, because if God did it for David, don't you think he'd do it for you? If he helped David kill Goliath and he helped Moses lead the people out of Egypt and he allowed Gideon to be strong and brave, he also gave Samson back his strength. See, When we have faith in God, nothing can take that away. Nothing could pull our faith from us. When we have a problem with something and we and we have faith, all we have to do is tell our father we have a problem in believing and he will help us a lot of times. It's just one situation that causes us to doubt or maybe we don't feel that God loves us enough, but God loves us so much. All he wants to do is connect with us and help us grow in him. We can't grow with no faith. And the word tells us that when we have no faith, it's impossible to please God. This is the last key, which is fasting, but so many other ways. But one of the other ways to grow our faith is God and God is fasting. This is one This is why a lot of people don't like to do it. They refuse to do it because they don't want to give up food or something. And honestly, all the keys we talked about today is very powerful. But this one right here have to be one that will give you so many benefits. So many people do the Daniel fast. Some people won't go on social media for days. Some will even change a habit of theirs. However you do it, first ask God today, what can I do to fast? How do you want me to fast? And he will tell you how he wants you to do it. And even for how long today, we, we talked about how to grow faith. 
Faith is one of those things that takes time to build and simply us letting go of the mistrust we have built or the fear we have because of things happening in our life. However, we do it. We have to be ready to make room for God. We can't possibly call ourselves Christians or lovers of God if we have no faith in him. No faith in no faith in what he's doing for us in our life as well. We have to rebuke the spirit of doubt and the spirit of hindrance and delay. Because if we let those spirits stay in ideals, we'll always be lacking only because of our faith. Ask God to help you grow your faith in him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We ask that you forgive us of the sins we have done. We ask that you help us grow in you. Today, we talked about our faith growing in you. Lord, help us with our unbelief. We want to trust you, but we have so many situations break our trust. Help us to give ourselves more and more to you each and every day. Lord, we submit every problem we face to you. We come humbly as we know how and ask you to be with us and give us strength throughout our day. We we thank you for everything you have given us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Man, so this ends how to grow faith in God. Now, growing our faith in God, I gave us three examples, maybe four, but I think it was three keys that I gave us. Um, hopefully the Holy Spirit lets me do another continuance of this because there's so many ways that we can grow our faith. And I think um when we try to start off small, that's better. Because when we do all these things at one time, it could be overwhelming. So starting off with the first three would be great to start off with. But another one that I, I love to do is praise and worship. When we praise and worship God, it releases our faith to him. It releases us where wherever we're bogged down with, wherever chains that we have, it breaks us free from that and allows his presence to come into our room and allows us to connect to him on a deeper level. You, you see, so that's another way to 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 have faith in God is to grow our faith in God is to praise and worship him. And I know someone might say, well, how do I praise and worship someone I don't have faith in? But you have to have a measure of faith to to you have to have some kind of faith to believe in what you're you're reading now. If you're here now, you have some kind of faith in knowing that God is real. So because of this, worshiping him will help you elevate that worshiping him will unlock any doubt because his presence come when we enter into his presence when we when we allow our guard to go down it allows his presence to come in okay so we're going to talk about the first key which is praying um praying will help us connect with god it will help us un un unlock the will that he has for us god has so much in store for some of us but a lot of us won't never get to tap into that until we pray a lot of us run from prayer. We don't set up a certain time to pray. We we feel like if we pray five minute, 10 minute prayers, those are fine. And those are fine if you're a babe in Christ. But as you grow in God, you need to start praying longer to him. I'm not saying two or three hours. Some people do. If you do, that's your prerogative. I have done it many times, but you do it according to how you want to do it. You, you never want to pray according to how someone else pray because it comes overwhelming because it's not your style. It's not who you are. So you pray according to how you want, but as you grow, you need to invest more time into praying with God. As you elevate in God, pit, pat, pat, prayers don't do it anymore. You can't grow your gifts. God can't grow his gifts in you. Your anointing in you that he's giving you cannot grow if you are still playing pit, pat, prayers, patty cake, patty cake prayers. You see what I'm saying? Now you lay me down to sleep, my soul to take. If lay me sleep, bleed through the night and wake me up in the morning like that, that prayer, I know I said it wrong. I, I botched it up. My mom will be upset because that was one of the prayers we used to pray as a child. But that little prayer there doesn't help me anymore when you're going to sleep. Uh, God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. By our heads, we are fed. Thank you, Lord, for daily bread. No. These little prayers. We are warriors now. We have to step into a deeper realm of the spirit. And I'm not saying when you pray over your food that you should be speaking in tongues and casting out demons. No, I'm saying that when you pray to God, that these small prayers just doesn't do it. We have to get intimate with God. We respect so much for him, but we don't give him so much. Uh, it used to be the saying, little prayer, little power, a lot of prayer, mighty power. And it's true. When we pray, we release so much in our lives by connecting with God. And we don't know his will because we don't seek him for it. We don't know his will because we don't connect with him. And in his word, it tells you 
little pieces in, 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 in pieces of the puzzle of how he wants your life to go and what he wants you to do. But if you never read your Bible, you never pray, then what do you expect? Okay. That is um, key number one. Key number two is waiting. A lot of us don't like to wait. We refuse to wait. We think this is just a scam. Why do I have to wait? This has to be an immediate thing. Even when we order stuff on Amazon, we're on there. And I think I've said this before. Amazon shipping used to be two-day shipping. Now it's maybe, depends on the item, four days. I ordered something for my Steam Deck I got for Christmas. And um, I ordered it last Friday. I just got it Thursday. You see what I'm saying? The shipping and me waiting. I had to wait. I did not want to wait. But Amazon had the cheapest memory card. So I had to wait. But did I want to? No. I looked at Best Buy. I looked at Walmart. I did everything else but go to Amazon. Amazon was my last result. It's almost like God. We don't want to wait on him. So we go to the mom and dad. We go to our friends. We go to our husband, boyfriend, girlfriends, whatever. We go to whoever before we go to God. We have to stop doing that. And we have to ask God for what we need. Ask him if it's in his will and wait. Once I ordered it, I had to wait. And I had to wait and wait and wait and wait. And when they sent it, they sent it a day early. It was been here Friday, got here Thursday. Happy camper. And it's just like God, when we ask and we wait and we trust that we had, we, we put in all our requests and we tell him about all our troubles that he's going to take care of it. Sure, we might have to wait two days. So now we might have to wait three days. Sometimes it's instant. But it's according to how his will will go for our life and about how we believe in him. Do we believe that when we speak the words that he hears us and that he's going to answer? Or do we say, I know he, I know he hears me, but he's not going to give it to me. Instantly as doubt. Instantly you killed your blessing. We have to start saying, I know I spoke it. I know he hears me. I know he's going to give it to me. We have to believe that he's going to give us these things. That's why we have to wait. Because sometimes he makes us wait to see how good is her faith. She's, oh, prophetess Lou down there. She keeps saying, oh, she has a lot of faith. She has a lot of faith. So let's see how long she can wait. Two months, three months, four months. Oh, she has a good, she's waiting pretty good. She's not getting angry. Let me release her, her blessing. And someone might say, oh, that's playing a game with my blessing. No, it's not. It's showing that I still love you whether you give me this. I still need you whether you give me this or not. I'm still going to hold your hand whether you whether you release that or not. I still need you. And we have to understand that we still need God whether he blesses us or not. And he is still faithful whether he blesses us or not. We shouldn't account. We shouldn't hold one blessing over his head and say, well, if you don't bless me, I don't believe in you. You're invisible. You're an imaginary friend. No, we cannot go to that depth. We must say, if you bless me. I'm okay with it. If you don't, I'm still okay. Now, sometimes we have to have that radical faith. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. It must be like Jacob. I'm going to hold on to you until you bless me. And he loves radical faith. Now, I'm not saying, oh, radical faith gets it instantly. Sometimes it don't. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been in that predicament. Sometimes I have believed and believed and I know it. I know he, he's going to give it to me. He doesn't immediately. But doesn't mean I lose my faith in him. It just tells me either A, it wasn't his will. B, he's not ready for me to have it. Or C, I need to pray longer on this thing. He wants me to rethink it over. Are you sure you want this? Is Are you sure you, you, you really need this? Okay. A um, couple of the verses that we we have um, for today for meditation is Psalms 1 and 2. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on his law day and night. We have to, well, that's for meditation. I'm sorry. We're going to go ahead and talk about this. Um, Psalms 25 and 5, guide me in your truth and teach me for you are a God of my salvation all day long. I'll wait for you. These verses are for meditation. A lot of people do not like meditation because they, they connect it with being something of like a Hindu or Buddhism or, or a Satanic or New Age books. Meditation is for us too. I have done a devotion on meditation. I'm hoping the Lord lets me refresh it a little bit. Um, but it's um, I'm going to try to find it and attach it to the bottom. If not, I'm going to pray to the Holy Spirit and allow him to ask him, can he let me do, how do Christians meditate? 
because how we meditate and how they meditate is different. They meditate by emptying their mind. We, we meditate by allowing the Holy Spirit to fill our mind. You see what I'm saying? It's totally different, but I don't want to keep talking about how to meditate to take away from this, but we must meditate day and night. Take a verse, read it, read it, read it, read it, and place it in you and say, Father, this is what I'm believing in. This is what I need to do. This is what I believe in, that I believe that you will guide me in my truth and teach me, and that I, if I, I, I can wait for you all day long. You see what I'm saying? Take that verse and meditate on it. That's one of the keys. The third key is is meditation. Um, When we have faith in God, when we study his word day and night, it releases power. Uh, If you look at um, one of the three examples that was given was David and Goliath. David was able to kill Goliath because David have always chased after God. He has always been in God's presence. He is always trusting God. He even came to Goliath. He said, I don't come with you as short as shield. I come with three. I come with you with the mighty hand of God. And I might be saying it wrong, but that's basically what he said. He swung that rock, pop, right in the middle of the head. How many people do you think could do that? Not, no, not none, really. But God allowed him to swing that, that slingshot and pop him in the center of the head, knock him right out. That was faith. Even with Gideon, he, and once Gideon let go of all his shakiness and unsh- being unsure and, and saying, oh, can you give me a sign for this? God gives him a sign. Oh, can you give me a sign for that? God gives him another sign. Oh, can you give me another sign for this? And he kept going, kept going, kept going. Then he realized, you know what? He's a real deal. Let me get myself together. And he started welcoming the blessings and the and the protection and the strength that Jesus was trying to, God was trying to give him, which was being brave. He's like, I got you, dude. Only thing I need you to do is go in that direction. I, I got you. You bring all these folks. No, I need you to have these folks go drink some water. Okay, pick out of these folks, uh, ones that are, are drinking water like a dog. I need those people to get, get rid of the rest of them because the rest of them I, I don't need. He went over there and fought them with the smallest amount of people. And you know why he believed and trusted in God? He had faith that if if he's telling me to get rid of all these people and just walk with these people, he have to be doing something. Let me let me let me see what's going on. Gideon got those people and they went and they battled and they battled it out and they duped it out and they won. Why? Because Gideon had faith that God would do what he says he can do. And that's the kind of faith we got to have is that no matter what I'm up against, the odds might be stacked against me, but I have faith in my God that he's going to release his strength and power in me so I can unlock the doors that I need to go forward. Amen. The fourth thing we, we talked about is fasting. A lot of people don't like to give up food. It's near Christmas. A lot of people aren't fasting. It, it, it is what it is. We, 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 some of us don't fast, but we got to get to the point where we actually do fast. Fast is so many benefits. I, I can say for one that at first, um, I, I wasn't a faster. I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I wasn't. I fast when I first learned about it. And I made this, uh, made up the, you know, I, I realized that you could do the Daniel fast. So I bought all this food and I started doing a Daniel fast. Almost <laughs> felt like I was dying because <laughs> I did not realize that it was other things I had to do to prepare myself. And I didn't. I, I I didn't do it right. So as I grew in God, I read more about it. I studied more about it. And um, I prayed more. A lot of people would be like, oh, I'm just going to take out food and that's fasting. No, you need to pray. You need to set out moments where you pray. You need to set out moments where you worship him. That's fasting. And when we say, I'm going to push away the plate because food is not what's going to lead me. God would do the rest. You, you see what I'm saying? at least try to fast three times a month and then build it up. Some people fast. I have known this one guy and he's a pastor on YouTube. He fasts, he said, for 200 days. I couldn't do it. I'm just being really transparent with you. I couldn't do it. I believe I could if I had a little more faith in me. That That's the problem. And sometimes that that is the problem, that we don't have faith in us, but we got to believe that we are his children, that he gave us his strength. He gave us his love. He gave us everything we need to prepare ourselves. We got to have more faith in us. We can't be like Gideon's and say, I can't do this. We got to be strong and say, I can do this because God is with me. But he fasted for 246 days or more. But that's not saying for someone that have never fasted to do that. No. 
God does not want us to hurt ourselves. But start off thought for small. I'm going to fast just for tonight. I'm going to fast one meal. Let me just try to fast one meal for seven days. Or let me fast one meal for my first fast. And what I do is I took everything out of my, my day. The, the whole thing. Took the whole thing out. And I did just a Daniel fast. And I didn't implement enough food. And I, I think I want to make myself sick if I can remember right. But still, you start off small. God knows that this is not something we're used to. So start off small. Start off with, I'm not going to eat for breakfast. And I'm going to pray through breakfast. I'm not going to eat for dinner. I'm going to pray for, through dinner. It's benefits in fasting. And when we fast, we unlock so many benefits. But we have to understand that while we fast, we must have faith. We must have faith that God sees me. He sees what I'm doing. He sees what I'm sacrificing because it's a sacrifice. We have to learn to sacrifice our time, sacrifice our food, sacrifice moments in our life to connect with God. We want to be a living sacrifice, even with our body. Okay? And a lot of us don't do that, but we got to start looking at the whole thing and say, what in my life in my life that's causing me to lack in faith? What's causing me in my life to doubt him? Oh, he didn't answer this one prayer. I understand you might need that one prayer, but God is still faithful. It might have not been something he wanted you to have. It might have been something you didn't need to do. We have to start looking at it like that. And when we do, we'll start, stop putting so much pressure on thinking that he can't do it. He's a big God. And he can do anything, anything. He parted the Red Sea. He stood the sun still. He caused an old woman to have a baby. He had a virgin have a baby. The, the death that Jesus suffered, most people would have died in the middle of it, but he didn't. He didn't die. He lived and rose again because that is God. We got to have faith. So today, if you lack in faith, ask God to help you to renew your faith. I'm Prophet Lou. This is the glory room. This ends how to grow faith in God. I pray you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow. Share with a family member, a friend, or even in your social media. Remember, it will be the devotion will be pinned to the bottom of the bio along with the memory verse, the verse of the day, further reading and reference. Thank you. Be blessed.